Hello everyone, welcome to Hook, Line and Sinker, the lap of Australia, Andrew. We're coming to you today from yep. what I'm saying is the eighth wonder of the world. Nick, this is Lucinda. It has a jetty, the biggest in the Southern Hemisphere. And out there it has the Great Barrier Reef and hopefully it has some fish. Hey, guys, you're on. Oh, that's a better cod. That's a better cod on the swim, mate. That's a big fish. Yeah. Oh, this is what it's all about, having a bass rusher like this driving around the country. Look at that. The only green piece we're here. The oh! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, fall in the water, you do that sort of thing. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> well, look at the size of it. <laughs> oh, look at the size of it. We begin this week's program in Lucinda, gateway to Hinchinbrook Island, close access to the Great Barrier Reef and home to the longest service jetty in the Southern Hemisphere, which reaches out more than five kilometres to sea. This allows all the cane cockies to export their sweet sugar to all parts of the world. As always, our destination of the week is brought to you by Isuzu D-Max, a standout performer on and off the road. The new look D-Max with its legendary three litre turbo diesel engine also comes with five star safety and three and a half tonne towing capacity across the entire 4x4 range. D-Max, go your own way. Well, have a look at that. A flat, glassy sea. We're here on the Barrier Reef, and this gentleman is Jeff Wilton, and he's going to show us everything that this place has to offer. Jeff, welcome back to the show. Mate, uh, tell us, we're here. We've made it out to the reef. A reasonable run out of uh, Lucinda. Yep, about 45k out here to Britomar. Yeah. So. It's our second closest reef. Yes, uh, and obviously on the menu today is a bit of, um, you know, reef fishing. We've brought an esky and ice and stuff, and we want to, uh, you know, put some fish in there. Yeah, we should fill it um, mm. pretty much with the best fish uh, we have available up here in the tropics. So, What are we talking about? Trout, coral well, trout? Yeah, top of the list would be coral trout, yep. um, but they're all good. I mean, you've got your red-throat emperor, and, geez, if we're lucky, we'll get some nannies and some red emperor later on. So. All right. Um, well, as mentioned, we have got just a beautiful day for it. Uh, and you're going to show us how it's all done. We haven't actually got any GPS marks, but this, this is all going to be by Jeff's melon. <laughs> the idea was to find a little drop off with plenty of fish life, then drop the pick and see who was at home. What have you got, Drew? That oh. was very good, Nick. Get out. What have you got? Oh, crikey <laughs> mo. Yeah. I don't want that. What whatever is, it is. Yeah, it's a, I think it's just a, it's a fluke fish. Yeah, it's a fluke fish, isn't it? Yeah. We'll add it to the species list. It's a um, fluke um, fish. It's a vaguely extraordinary thing, Drew. I don't really want to catch that, dogs. Are you uh, grabbing behind the head? How you grabbing you? behind the head? <laughs> Here you go, grabbing behind the head. Yeah, <laughs> That's um, extraordinary, fish. isn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You ate that little soft plastic. Yeah. Um, Look at that, eh? I mean, what's he doing, the fish? What a wonderful fish. creature. Yeah, yeah. How about that? Isn't nature strange? It's floaty. Yeah. Well done. Like mm, a sort yes. of a garfishy your... type. That, that's my personal best float. <laughs> float. That's your best float. Definitely yeah. my best float. I only got a photo of it. I'm so proud of it. Yeah. <laughs> Fish. It's not a massive fish. Now we've just adjusted where we were sitting. Um, Jeff, anchoring is kind of a big deal in these parts. You've got to get your anchoring performance under control, so you've got to move around a bit. Right, oh, so look at that. It's a juvenile red emperor. Look at that. That's a pretty fish. Uh, does juvenile red emperor mean, you know, adult red emperor somewhere? It may. What have we got there? This is a grassy emperor, I think. All right, well, this is more positive. This is more positive. Yep. It's all about that 32. 32 metres. We were anchored up in 24 metres. A lot of pickers, Terrible. not much quality. 
We're calling it the dead zone, but um, Andrew's sort of taken charge of the anchor of the muir and- Captain Andrew. Put us in 32. Good work, Drove. Thanks very nice much, Nick. Jeff, that is a welcome catch for us, do you yeah. would agree? Yeah, so that's a fusel air. Yep. Um, probably top of the list for pretty much every species, so GTs love them. Yep. Um, yeah, and as far as a bait fish for trout and... Yep. So yeah, we're going to take the fillets off that fish. Yep, we're going to take the fillets off them and um, slab it up and drop them down. Right. Okay. So nearly as good as actually catching a trout. Excellent work. Well done, you. Just as well you came along. <laughs> sure enough, the succulent fillets of the Hussa did get the attention of the fish we were after. Yes, bro. Better fish, I think, Nick. Slightly better. Oh, Slightly better. Exciting. Is it target species? Oh, well, who would know? There are quite a few species, I suspect, swimming around those waters. I'm calling trout. Really? I'm going to call it. And we're saying Lucinda is just famous for its cold <laughs> trout oh. fishing. <laughs> and um, that's why, because that's what you catch here. You come here. And you catch that. You drop down and you catch that. And that's that is, it. you know, one of the best eating fish in the sea. Best eating fish in the sea. Given the conditions, which were perfect, we continued to fish, but it was slow, too slow. Look, we haven't set the world on fire there, Jeff. Um, so it's time for a big decision. Big decisions need to be made. Okay, what's the big decision? Uh, Drew, you're part of this. Come in here. You're uh, you're a part of it. Big so part of it. I feel like I am. Yeah. Uh, okay, but you are. You are, Andrew. Yeah. Do you want to talk about it? No. Why don't you feel like you're part of it? No, I'm part of it. Okay. All right, we'll come oh, back I'm to not that. convinced. No, no. All right. Uh, but out here, so this is the second closest reef to uh, Lucinda, but we're going to go far, far, far away. We're, we're going to go far, far. We're going to leave this reef behind us, yep. and we're going to yeah, scoot out around a bit further, try and get away from people. Yes. Uh, and try and find new water, because it's not happening here. Okay. Let's go. We're pretty well set up to go far, far away. Yeah. Pick her up. Stick around after the break, we do go far, far away with immediate results and later would you jump out of a plane to catch a fish. You're watching Hook, Line and Sink and we find ourselves in northern Queensland fishing out from Lucinda on the Great Barrier Reef. It's all part of our lap of Australia where we're towing our big bar crusher the whole way round the country. Bad fish. Look at the background. You've sort of done that very silently, yeah, haven't you? Not a lot of fuss about you today. No, I don't have a lot of words in me today. Just uh, sneaking about. Yep. But, no, this is all right. It sort of gruels he came up off the bottom. That's what you want. It's a... Nanagoth. A nanny. Yeah, it's a nanny. Very nice. Look at those colours. Very nice. Now, um, beautiful. We caught some of those down at, off the reef at Gladstone, Drew, and you ate them. Yeah, they were absolutely superb. They are yeah. very nice. Absolutely yep. superb. So I should probably get him in the. Yeah, very nice. You don't the want nasty. them any bigger, too. That's good. He can join his mate, the trout. Talking oh, to um, one of our friends last night who has had cigaterra poisoning. Yeah. Uh, and it doesn't Lucky sound Neil. good. Lucky Neil. Yeah. Said so he woke up in the middle of the night and it was like someone was trying to extract his teeth with big pliers. So that's obviously very uncomfortable. Uh, if you have a shower, hot feels hot cold. Hot is cold, cold is hot. hot. Yeah. Um, if you have a drink of cold water, it feels hot. No, it tastes, it, it's metallic. It's like drinking metal. Not cool. No. This is feeling much better. Oh, a Chinaman. A Chinaman. 
nice colours on Oh, it. they're pretty oh, fish. Oh, they're pretty fish. Can't go in the esky, though. No. He's your uh, pin-up poster boy. They go hard, but For Cigatera. This is a much, much better spot. Plan B. Plan B is Plan a lot a. better. He's going all right. Plan A, not great. Plan B though, it is Ooh. instantaneous. As <laughs> soon as you get down there. This might be fish of the day, dogs. I'll get it, I'll get it. Just this is a big it. red. It feels like a good fish, Drew. It feels like a big, strong, Great Barrier Reef fish. Come on, Emperor. All right, it's a it's a trevally. Oh. A it's bludger. A good, it's a good trevally. Yeah. Look at it through the water. It's... Yes, what an extraordinary sight this is coming up. <clears throat> well, certainly one of the fish that can pull in this neck of the woods is the trevally. Look at the bludger. Um, People up here, you know, diehards, when they are reef fishing, don't much love those because it could be a good red and it turns out to be a trevally, which is not out of the species and we'll put him back. But, uh, well that's work out. You're popping, so that's yeah. always a good sign. Happy days. A Chinaman and a trevally. My arms were stretched, but I wanted something we could eat. Meanwhile, on the other side of the boat, I just quietly went about my business. Mine's going to be a trout. Trout. Calling yep. it? Calling it? Good. I love an early call. Confidence is slowly returning. It is. I just ate something. Energy burst. No. Oh, no. It's a nice red throat. There's a red throat, bud. That, that can nice. add to my trout and nanagai in my esky, boys. More red. Okay. Team player. Nice, nice. They're superb, eating dogs. We ate one of them the other day. And we very much enjoyed it, Drew. Well done. The esky was starting to look okay. A trout, a nanny, and a red throat. Delicious. Oh. Yes, Jeff, yes, Jeff. All right. Talk it through it. What are you calling it for? I'm calling it. I'm calling it for a good trout. Outstanding work. Oh, not too sure now. Tell me good though. Nanny. Nanny, largemouth nanny. Nice nanny. What have you got, dogs? I mean, not bad. Something not bad. Oh, here he comes. Now the nanny guy, I think. Nanny guy. Nanny guy. Nice fish, though. Another nanny guy. And suddenly. Large mouth? Yeah. Oh, oh nice that's fish. a good one. That's a good fish. That's a magnificent so, um, fish. So I'm going to put mine away because it's really got nothing on that one. No. And suddenly. Just like that, we've filled our rest. Oh, yes. <laughs> look at that. That's good fishing. Oof. Smile. We left the big nannies biting as we had more than enough tasty fish and pointed our fishing weapon for Hinchinbrook Island and the next part of our Lucinda adventure. Yep, after the break, it's Barra on Brim gear and later the most daring stunt ever undertaken on a fishing show. If you would like to dig a little deeper into the when, where and how, plus all the latest gear to use, look no further than the team at Wilson Fishing. He's a good fish. Oh! 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 That's not a cooter. Oh! 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 Look at him go! A family-owned Australian fishing company, Wilson, have the online resources to help you catch more fish more often. Oh, mate, look at this thing. It's gold. It's unbelievable. The Zarek Zeppelins. Well done. Subscribe for your free online magazine, Redefine the Game. Yes, double player! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <The nice. laughs> Explore countless action-packed YouTube tutorials. <laughs> That's a beast! That is what fishing is about, is catching things like that in places like this. Absolutely awesome. And stay up to date via social media for news from all the brands that make Wilson Fishing great. Welcome back to Hook, Line and Sinker's Lab of Australia, where you find us staying at the Lucinda Fishing Lodge. Before the break, we'd had a lovely day at sea. Now it's time to explore Hinchinbrook Channel, but not before afternoon tea. 
Dykes, this is Lucinda. This is the gateway to Hinchinbrook. And as you say, for years and years on this show, we've heard about the fishing from Hinchinbrook and the fishing around these parts. But for some reason, and I don't know what it is, we've no. never been here. No. We've rolled into town. We're being hosted yes. by the Lucinda Fishing Lodge. Yes, we are. And we are going fishing. Yes. But before any of that happens, <laughs> have a look at this. This yes. is lunch. That's yours. <laughs> and this is mine. <laughs> These were caught um, <laughs> this morning. Two hours ago. Yep. Yeah. Cooked up. Uh, pretty good crabbery apparently here. <laughs> and we hope, although I'm not too fussed, that there are some fish around. No, we won't hear from you now, will we? Not really. You're not really no. going to fish. Mm -hmm. We're going to go barra fishing, Whatever. jacks fishing, maybe a salmon or something. Good. Yeah. Good. I'm not going to watch you. Either. Oh. oh no, that's not great. I don't do that anymore. After a messy feed of crabs and a short boat ride from the lodge, we were ready to fish. So we're fishing the Hinchbrook Channel. At, um, it's probably about 60 odd k of um, yeah, just flats, estuaries and rivers. It's, yeah. It's really a fisherman's paradise. And it has all the big ticket things, barra, jacks, all that sort of stuff. Yep. Um, you've got us fishing light though. That is a brim rod more or less. Um, and a little Zeric live shrimp. Yep. Well, um, it's a bit of a task for us here. We're fishing in winter. Yep. Um, we're probably a little late on the tide. Yes. But, I suppose we're just trying to get a reaction bite. We're fishing lighter leaders and smaller profiles, so. And I guess the fish have got nowhere to sort of get you if you hook one. No, I mean, it's all open here, so yeah. you just let them go, let them run, and you'll have no dramas um, landing them, so. Right -o. Fish on, Fish on. What have you got there? Flathead. Oh, yes. what Slowly you working that. Oh, nice flathead. And this is the thing. We so have what about that? Barra fishing, fishing in. And you've got a flathead. A foot of water. You know it's winter when you start catching flathead. Yeah, in the right. Yeah. Classic. So Jeff, you're saying winter is a tough time to catch the glamorous species like the flathead and jacks and things like that. It's. It's still doable, but it's it's definitely more difficult. I'll tell you what it is, it's better than being in Tassie. Winter here is better than being in Tasmania where we live, dogs. Well, it's Fair certainly call. warmer here, Drew. Because no. this is a winter's day and it's 25. Yeah, lovely. Is it a bathtub flathead? Oh, I'm not a flathead expert. <laughs> no one knows what sort of flathead it is, but dogs, I'm <laughs> saying it's a bathtub flathead. Well, because all... look at its tail. I know, and the tail is indicative in flathead species, Drew. It's definitely a bathtub. Absolutely. Thank you, yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. I'll pop him back to grow bigger, but um, yep, bar tail flathead. Tick that one off the list. New one for the list, dog. Well done. The Bari. Just yep. try and present it like imagine 30 to 40 centimetres in front of its nose instead of over the actual fish. Yep. Just try and so get land it. it there. Yeah, land like like you to just try and get it. Ooh, oh, that's a jack eating something or a barra. Jack, something good fish. That's a nice fish. <laughs> oh, get him, get it right in there. He's still eating. Right in that water. This is getting exciting. Um, just saw a barra. Spooked it. Just saw another big fish. <laughs> Got him. That's pretty good. Yeah. Everything's just coming up on those flats, hunting. All the, and there's lots of bait around. Yeah. So yeah, that's a trevally. Well done. And what version of trevally, Jeff? Ah, uh, so that is a little mini GT or giant trevally. Yeah, right. Eh? Only a. That's only a juvenile when they think they grow 50, 60 kilos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And become real, yeah, bruises. So. So the little fellas like that, you know, do their growing up 
here in the estuary? Well, it's a perfect environment. There's a lot of small bait and, you know, it's shelter for them. So anyway, we'll put him back and we'll see him out on the reef. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's here the we right go. species. Well done. We were just saying they're here because we're seeing fish get scared off the flats. We're seeing them sitting there. All right, that's, that's a, the species we're after, mate. That's a small sample of a barra, hinchy barra. It's a good start. What is that our average size, Jeff? No, nah, that's definitely a that's a small a small fish. But it's, it's still in good condition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On across the shoulders oh, we'll there. Take so, it. Yeah. We'll take him. Well done. Still to come, putting a whole new spin on the term fly fishing. If you love hook, line and sinker, then don't let the magic end when the show does. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram, constantly posting updates and videos about our adventures. That's a big fish. Yeah! Oh, Feel free to join in the conversation, post stories and pictures of your greatest catches and keep up to date with where we've been and where we're going. Oh, look at the size of it! Oh, look at the size of it! Oh. So jump online today and become part of the Hook, Line and Sinker team. Hook, Line and Sinker time and our lap of Australia continues. Currently, we're in Hinchinbrook Channel chasing Barra in super shallow and skinny water. Fish on! Oh. It's the caddy. Yes, all right. See what, but the power tail. It's certainly exciting. Excellent. Fish on. Oh no. What do you? What have you oh, done? Foul you to stingray. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's not ideal on this light gear. No. Jeff, can you do this for me? Yes. <laughs> I don't want to do Can that. you do this for me as well? <laughs> this stingray, you can get this off the stingray off. Have you got that, all of that? Yes, I have this. He's actually eating that. Has he? Well, you know, it's in his mouth. Look at that, catch and release. Stingray, oh, add that to the list. Well done. Lovely. <laughs> we continued fishing, hopeful that at some point in the tide, the barrel would bite. It. Yes. <laughs> That's got all the hallmarks of a nice power tail, I think, Bruce. How do you know? <laughs> uh, just, I've caught so many of them. Um, Jeff, I don't know whether you're aware, but uh, people can look at the catfish as a bit of a sort of a, you know, a bit of a negative on the species list. But um, by simply rebranding them using a um, a well-worn marketing technique, Drew, and calling it's a them... Barra. It's a barra! It's a barra! See? Look at that. Uh, Look at that. I thought you were early on your call. Uh, I just thought I saw some colour. It's not only a barra, but it's a good barra. It's barra of the day! Oh. Look at this. On your brim fishing gear, mate. I know. I know. And another thing we should let you in on, we had already given up. We yeah, I'm on. Oh, we got a double hooker. I'm giving on. up. I'm on. Good right. fish. So light gear, very. I'll net him because of the lightness. Very, very well little, done. little hooks. Oh, but make, make sure he goes. He goes in the net. That's a man. Well done, you. It's a very nice fish. Very nice fish. Thank Just you very much. That net there. All Sorry, right. yeah. The double net. And that's one bar in the net. What about my bar in the net as well? And yeah. Just yeah, like that, okay? so what about that? A two bar net. Well done, Jeff. Well no done. Worries. There you go, on two different lures. I use the live cherupin, you use the good flat, old shad, flat shad. The good old flat shad, which you can't go wrong if you're barra fishing. And that is an immensely satisfying uh, way to finish up winter a little. Wintertime barra dogs. I like wintertime fishing here in Lucinda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Barra. Look at that. Sensational. Good time. 
Lucinda truly is a fisherman's paradise. The reef, Hinchinbrook Channel and even the jetty all offer fantastic fishing throughout the year. Staying at Lucinda Fishing Lodge will make your trip even better. As well as beautifully appointed accommodation right on the water, the lodge offers you a private jetty to tie up to, fish cleaning facilities and freezers and caters for all your meals. You'll be looked after better than you are at home. To find out more, visit lucindafishinglodge.com.au. Now after the break, a rendezvous with a difference in the middle of the Coral Sea. Deciding where you'll study can be guided by how likely you are to get a job at the end. Nick Haysom is an AMC graduate who spent the first part of his career at sea and is now a marine pilot who navigates ships safely in and out of port. You've got to have uh, the ability to think on your feet. You've got to have some local knowledge about where you're, uh, the river you're transiting, especially in the Tamar River. It's a little bit difficult at times. And just a general navigational background, so knowing how to navigate a ship and how difficult it can be at times. Today he's passing on some of that valuable experience to students working on ship handling in the simulator. Increasing thruster to 30, bow thrust to 30. At the Australian Maritime College, students are often rubbing shoulders and building networks with industry types. Nick's employer Taz Ports uses these same facilities at AMC to make sure their pilots are at the top of their game. Every year we come in and do uh, fog training for the River Tamar. So we come in and use up the, the upstairs simulator and do blind pilotage, basically, up and down the river. We also do emergency operations. It's not just for training purposes. The AMC facilities provide real-world information and allow the Port Authority to test different scenarios. It's really good, yeah. Uh, we recently had, um, had to do some work for a client where we um, had to simulate ships of a bigger size outside of our tidal windows and so we used the bridge to do that and uh, yeah, it worked out well. And we could see exactly what was happening with these ships that we were proposing to bring in. If you're interested in turning your passion for the water into a rewarding career, check out all that the Australian Maritime College has to offer at amc.edu.au. One thing that you do get to do on the lap is meet a lot of people, and that's yep. fantastic. People are fantastic, and they're very generous most of the time with their fishing spots, Dykes. Uh, their fishing spots, their knowledge, and also who they, who they know. Yes. Um, we were talking to a man last night who knew a man who knows about a spot, a spot called Spot X. Now, Spot X is out on the Great Barrier Reef, and the interesting thing about it, aside from it being a fabulous fishery, Andrew, yes, yes, yes. is there is a very, very unusual way of getting there, oh. which I'm going to be exploring. You will go in the traditional method. Yeah. I will travel express. Really? Yep. Our secret spot X is a beautiful little sand cave found some 40 kilometres out to sea from Cairns. It's smack bang in the middle of the Great Barrier Reef. The sun, the sand, the fishing. It's an island paradise just waiting to be explored. First step though was to drop Nick off at an undisclosed location near Innisfail. Righto, so the route to Spot X yes. starts here. Now, have you got Spot X firmly implanted in your mind? Yes, I have. Because a big part of today is you managing to find Spot X in the boat. I'm not that worried. I will put the boat in the boat ramp and I will go to Spot X. I have drive, GPS coordinates. Got to drive to Cairns first. Yep. Um, it's quite an inconvenient way to get to Spot X. Not really. It's below five knots. I'm going to be doing like 27 knots, 28 knots in the bar crusher. I will be doing considerably more than that, my man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you there. After a quick drive to the boat ramp, I was on my way, navigating into waters unknown, but it was all pretty smooth sailing. Well, what a glorious, glorious day. There's not a breath of wind. It is high 20s, a wonderful winter's day. This is why we did the lap of Australia, to escape the southern climes. And I'm telling you, I'm feeling extremely relaxed about this afternoon. There is under five knots of breeze. I'm going to sit on probably close to 30 knots in this bar crusher uh, on a flat, calm coral sea out to the beautiful barrier reef. What could be better? What could be more relaxing 
Denise. Meanwhile, at a field out the back of Innisfail, I was preparing for my big entry and potentially my last days. For some reason, still unknown to me, I had agreed to jump out of a perfectly good aeroplane. Alrighty. Nick, how are you feeling, mate? Uh, on an anxiety scale, one to ten, I'm at three. Three. Well, 15,000 feet above the Great Barrier Reef, yep. you're going to be hanging out of this plane, mate. Yeah. Legs right back under the plane. Yes. Arms crossed. Big banana, and we're just going to roll. Where are you going to be at this point? I want to be behind you, mate. I'll hopefully be behind you, strapped on. Going to have a cameraman hanging off the side. Going to roll out. Big banana. About three seconds after. Tap, tap, tap. We're going to fall all the way to about five and a half thousand feet. Open the parachute. How, how long does that period from 15,000 to five and a half? About 60 seconds. Oh Jesus. Yeah, we've got a bit of weight between us, so we'll be motoring about 200 k's an hour. We're loving it. Beautiful day, the reef, checking out some fishing spots. Sweet. Anxiety level now gone to six. Oh, God, really? I continued out. The bar crusher cruising at speed. It was a beautiful day, and there was plenty of other watercraft enjoying the sun. <laughs> 30 knots. 30 knots we're doing. What about that parasailer? What an idiot. Who in their right mind would risk themselves by being towed behind a boat on a parachute? What a nothing. Uh, I mean, what, you're going to strap yourself to a parachute and get towed behind a boat. There's nothing worse than I can think of. These lines just around your neck there, mate. How you feeling? Good. Yeah. I mean, I mean, not great. <laughs> It's All right. Be a lot of fun. Yes. All right. So life jacket in here. This is a fanny pack. Beautiful fanny pack. Excellent. We won't need that, Tim, will we? No. 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 Just a shame. Although, in you know, kind of the things that could go wrong, a life jacket's probably not the worst thing. No, you no, need. it's okay. Feels good. Feels all right. You've done this before, Smart. though, haven't you? Just a couple of times. You got kids? You got kids? Got kids? Yeah. Don't need any more. No. <laughs> you hope you sort that out. <laughs> Love you, kids. <laughs> Coming up next, will Nick go splat? Yamaha Motor Finance is simple, convenient, and is tailor-made to suit your lifestyle. Applications can be completed at one of Yamaha's nationwide dealerships or pre-approved online through the YMF website. Now there is even more reason to take advantage of the benefits Yamaha Motor Finance and Insurance can offer you. Are you ready to make your dream a reality? Welcome back to the show where it's getting very, very real. I'm en route to a secret fishing spot in the middle of the Coral Sea in the conventional fashion of a boat and a motor. While I was just starting a midlife crisis, deciding to arrive at our fishing spot by jumping out of a plane with another man strapped to my back. Things are beginning to get real here. Um, jump time has been confirmed for 1pm. It's currently 12.50. Probably the only downside of um, this new and inventive way of getting to remote fishing spots is you have to wait until the boat gets there. So I've been sitting around, going to have a pie now to calm my nerves. I mean, I like a boat ride. I do like a boat ride. And on a day like today, it'd be great out there. But this, potentially revolutionising the way we fish. And there, there is Spot X. Just a short boat ride out from Cairns in the middle of the Coral Sea. A beautiful sand cake which we are going to fish from and use as a base. But it turns out Spot X is not a secret spot. Um, one, two, three, four, five, five like umbrellas on Spot X. So I'm not even going to worry about counting the boats. There's like a hundred of them. Um, but what a beautiful spot. I don't think Nick is here yet. I don't, I, I guess he's going to make some sort of grand entrance. Um, it'll be nothing too extreme. It's a bit of an old nana these days, so I suspect he'll be in a, um, I, I'm, I'm thinking helicopter. Um, but really, 
What could be better than just a cruise out in the bar crusher? Fantastic. We'll go and pull her up on the beach. magic place. This man looks like he's doing something official. How are you, mate? G'day, mate. How are you? I'm Andrew from the fishing show. Terry. Tandem Cairns, how are you? Hey, Terry. What, uh, do you know anything about anyone coming today? I think my mate's coming in on a helicopter or a hot air balloon or something sort of subtle and nice like that. Yeah. What are you up to? No helicopters here, mate, but I hear something might be getting chucked out of a plane and I thought I'd better set up a bit of a target for him. What do you mean getting chucked out of a plane? Um, well, you know, I've got a couple of mates that sort of like to do those things, and like maybe your mate might be with them. Skydive? Well, you know, I it's didn't use be... those particular words. My mate's not going to skydiving, mate. He's like an old nana. Well, you, you know, know, driving Miss Daisy? I've heard of that. Yeah, so uh, no driver. There's no way he's going to skydive. Yeah, well, some people, uh, they don't really have to jump. They just get pushed, so maybe that'll suit your mate. How's it going to work? He'll just skydive in? Or he'll be strapped to someone? He'll be strapped uh, to look, another man? Chances are he'll be strapped to another man. He'll be strapped and to a man against who his has will. his life in his hands. I'd say so, yeah. Yeah. Strapped to a man. All right, <laughs> good. This is going to be funny. This is going to be funny. He's a bigger bloke, you know, Nick. He's a bigger bloke. Uh, yeah, yep. That just means they fall faster. Because they are the harder they fall. That's exactly right. All right. Where's the plane? <laughs> Shouldn't be too far off. feeling nervous now. I don't want to watch my old mate go splat on the ground or break his legs. I'm not sure why he'd do this. The door is open. That's a real bloody threshold right there. Holy hat. Holy hat. This is as real as anything right now. Fifteen thousand feet we fell and tumbled and screamed and fell and yahooed. It was the most exhilarating thing I've ever done. <laughs> then Tim tapped me on the shoulder and I could finally enjoy the view. I'm 
guessing that's not Nick Dygan. Unless he's been practicing skydiving and hasn't told me. That is Nick Dygan. Um, just now I reckon being able to take a breath. Uh, because all that free fall rubbish is over. And now I reckon that would be fun. That would be fun. Oh. I can promise you, without any fear of contradiction, that that is the most extreme thing you'll ever do. That's unbelievable, <laughs> Demi, my boy. Mate, would you try it again? Oh, yes. Mate, Sudbury Sand Cave, we're oh. ready to go fishing. Pretty, oh. pretty epic way to go fishing, hey? Mate, what a bloody experience that is. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Just oh. give me a moment. <laughs> Oh. oh, big man's down. He's down. Mate. All right, so with a couple of moments just to gather ourselves up, uh, mate, thank you. No worries. What How was that? bloody experience that was. What you, what you like the most? Uh, <laughs> look, to be honest, the, the minute you get spat out of that plane and start falling, tumbling and falling, God almighty. That is, uh, that is very real, all that. It is. And, and then I didn't know what was happening when you pulled the parachute. That was also, you know how you think, oh, when they pull the parachute, it must give you a massive wedgie. Yes, it does. Uh, but, God, look at this, mate. Beautiful look at the day, day eh? we have got here. Uh, and when we were coming down, you probably couldn't hear me, but I reckon I could see GTs. So Would be definitely GTs out there. Edge. And we'll probably go and smack a few now. Righto. Let's do it. Where's Hart? Oh, there he is. He's having a drink. Brilliant. If you've ever wanted to jump out of a plane, all you need is the courage and the team at Tandem Cairns will take care of the rest. Tandem Cairns offer a variety of skydiving adventures. Visit the website at tandemcairns.com.au and book in today. You will not regret it. If you are staying in this amazing part of the world, then we would recommend you check out Imagine Drift Apartments in Palm Cove, offering a range of accommodation options, including these magnificent beachfront condominiums. This is the place to relax while enjoying all that North Queensland has to offer. In case you were wondering, we did spend the afternoon of the jump day fishing, casting stick baits around some of the nearby reefs and drop-offs, our skydiving cameraman even jumping in and spearing us dinner. Lures zero at this point, but spear gun one. Sure is a day we will never forget. Now next week we get a new car, catch a barge and continue north, as far north as you can go when we explore the very tip of Cape York.